Hare Krishna. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. It's bringing so much joy to my heart. Uh, out here in the crowd, there must be uh, all of you Vaishnavas are more advanced, more senior. Many of you have smiled on me. Many of you have given me your encouragement, your guidance, and many of you have been so dedicated to Srila Prabhupada's movement and building the wonderful community here. Whenever I come to India, I come to India to disconnect. For the last uh, 20 years since coming to Chaupati, I never came back because mainly when I come to India, I go to take shelter of the dham. So we don't stop anywhere except Vrindavan and Mayapur. And when we go to Vrindavan and Mayapur, we try to disappear and just study, chant, and be a beggar. But somehow or other, the opportunity came up to come to Mumbai, and I thought I should come. I remember His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj was on this Vyasasana, and he said, I've come here as a thief. Because I've heard there's so much devotion here and I've witnessed it now with my eyes. So I've come here as a thief to steal some of that. So, so come as a thief. <laughs> this community is uh, incredible. On a personal level, you inspired my spiritual life in incredible ways. And on an international level, you are showing such a beautiful example of living Krishna consciousness. So it's my deep fortune to be with all of you. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you for showing me your love. And thank you for giving me some small opportunity today to purify myself as we uh, hear from the beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Gopi Janavallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Raja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna 
Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Nithai Gaura Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Gaura Hari Bol. 
Nitai Gora Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Gora Hari Bol. Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pa, Prabhu Pa, Prabhu Pa, Jaya Prabhu Pa. Jai Jai Prabhu Pa. Prabhu Pai, Prabhu Pai, Jaya Prabhu Pai. Jai Nitai, Gaura Premanande, Hari Hari Bol, Shri Hari Nam, San Kirtan Ki, Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki. Oma Gyana Timirandhasya, Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalan Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Harijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalitha Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna, so welcome everyone this morning. Today we're reading from the beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. This is our life and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Sanatan Goswami prays very beautifully. Madaika bandhu mad sangin mad guru man mahadhana man nishtaraka mad bhagya mad ananda namostute. I offer my respectful obeisances to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Madaika bandhu because the Bhagavatam is my real friend. Mat Sangin, the Bhagavatam is my constant companion through every chapter of life. Mat Guru, the Bhagavatam is teaching me. Mat Bhagya, the Bhagavatam is my greatest fortune. Madananda is the source of my happiness. Manishtaraka, 
the Bhagavatam is always lifting me up. And therefore, let me pay my respects to Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the wonderful gift given to us by the Parampara and, of course, by Srila Prabhupada. When Srila Prabhupada came to America, someone said, Oh, Swamiji, I heard you're going to America. He said, The Bhagavatam is going to America. I am carrying it. That's very nice. Because Tadvag Vishargo Janataga Viplavo Yasmin Prati Shlokam Abhadavaktyapi. That yes, the Bhagavatam will create a revolution in the impious lives of the misdirected civilization. So let us read from Srimad Bhagavatam today. Today we're reading from Canto number three, uh, Canto number two, chapter number two, entitled The Lord in the Heart. And today we're reading from text number one. Shri Sukha Uvacha Evam Pura Dharanayatma Yoni Nashtam Shmitir Pratyavarudya Tushtam Tathasa Sarje Dhamamoga Drishti Yathapya Yat Prag Vyavasaya Buddhi Shri Sukovacha Evam Puradharanayatma Yoni Nashtam Shmritir Pratyavarudya Tushtak Tatasa Sarje Dhamamoga Drishti Yathapya Yat Prag Vivasaya Buddhi Evam Puradharanayatma Yoni Nashtam Shmritir Pratyavarudya Tushtak Tathasa Sarje Dhamamoga Drishti Yathapya Yat Prag Vyavasaya Buddhi Bhagavata 
Jesus. Thank you so much. Nice to have recitations from all the four directions, <laughs> including uh, when Mataji was reciting, it was like the Akash Vani, you know? <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> it's like, wow, it's, the, the voice is coming from the demigods. Thank you so much. Shri Sukha Uvacha. Shri Sukha Dev Goswami said. Evam. Just in the same way. Pura. Prior to the manifestation of the cosmos. Of the cosmos. Dharanaya. By such a conception. Atmayoni. Of Brahmaji. Nashtam, lost, Shmritim, remembrance, Pratyavarudhya, by regaining consciousness, Tushtat, because of appeasing the Lord, Tatha, thereafter, Sasarja, created, Idam, this material world, Amaugadrishti, one who has attained clear vision. Yatha as apyayat created. Prak as formerly. Vivasaya ascertained. Buddhi intelligence. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Lesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki. Sri Sukadev Goswami said, Formerly, prior to the manifestation of the cosmos, Lord Brahma, 
by meditating on the Virat Roop, regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. Thus, he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before. Purport. The example cited herein of Sri Brahmaji is one of forgetfulness. Brahmaji is the incarnation of one of the mundane attributes of the Lord. Being the incarnation of the passion mode of material nature, he is empowered by the Lord to generate the beautiful material manifestation. Yet, due to his being one of the numerous living entities, he is apt to forget the art of his creative energy. This forgetfulness of the living being, beginning from Brahma down to the lowest insignificant ant, is a tendency which can be counteracted by meditation on the Virat Rup of the Lord. This chance is available in the human form of life, and if a human being follows the instruction of Srimad Bhagavatam and begins to meditate upon the Virat Rup, then revival of his pure consciousness and counteraction of the tendency to forget his eternal relationship with the Lord can follow simultaneously. And as soon as this forgetfulness is removed, the Vyavasaya Buddhi, as mentioned here, and in the Bhagavad Gita 241, follows at once. This ascertained knowledge of the living being leads to loving service of the Lord, which is the living which the living being requires. The kingdom of God is unlimited, therefore the number of assisting hands of the Lord is also unlimited. The Bhagavad Gita 13.14 asserts that the Lord has his hands, legs, eyes and mouth in every nook and corner of this creation. This means that the expansions of differentiated parts and parcels called jivas or living entities are assist, assisting hands of the Lord, and all of them are meant for rendering a particular pattern of service to the Lord. The conditioned soul, even in the position of Brahma, forgets this by the illusory material energy generated out of false egoism. One can counteract such false egoism by invoking God consciousness. Liberation means getting out of the slumber of forgetfulness and becoming situated in the real loving service of the Lord, as exemplified in the case of Brahma. The service of Brahma is the samples of service in liberation distinguished from the so-called altruistic activities, services full of mistakes and forgetfulness. Liberation is never in action but service without human mistakes. Srila Prabhupada Ki. This is the sad story of our life. Somehow or other, we have forgotten Krishna. Krishna Bhuli Se Jiva Anadi that the living entity since time immemorial has forgotten about Krishna and is now nikata stamaya dare japatiya dare is now being struck down by the energy of maya which is keeping the living entity in illusion. Once a devotee had left the movement, so there was a meeting and Srila Prabhupada was present in that meeting and Srila Prabhupada asked, where is this devotee? So then one devotee stood up and he said, oh, that devotee, he left. And then someone else stood up and said, anyway, Srila Prabhupada, when he's been kicked by the material energy enough, then he will come back. And Prabhupada looked at that devotee and said, just as there is no limit to the varieties of enjoyment in the spiritual world, similarly there are no limit to the varieties of ways in which maya can entrap and illusion the spirit soul in the material world. The maya has every trick under the sun 
to keep the living entity in forgetfulness. This is the uh, sad story of our life. Therefore, we are trying to bring in Krishna. Krishna, Surya, Sama, Hoya, Maya, Andhakar. Yaha Krishna, Taha Nahi, Maya Radhikar. Krishna is just like the sun and Maya is like darkness. And wherever there is Krishna, there cannot be any darkness. And therefore, here we are hearing of how Brahmaji regained his consciousness by meditating on the universal form of the Lord. Virat Rup, just by uh, studying and focusing and meditating on this universe, he began to understand, yes, there is a Lord, the Supreme Lord exists, and this brought him back in contact. One time, Srila Prabhupada brought a flower to a devotee and said, see this, just by studying this flower, you can become God conscious. Isn't that amazing? Because yes, we look around at the world and if a devotee is intelligent, if a devotee has the proper vision, then behind all the virat, all the universal things that we see in this world, we will see Krishna. Yad yad vibhuti mad sattvam shrimad ur jitamevava tattadeva vagachatvam Whatever beautiful and glorious uh, creations one sees, the devotee sees that this is just a spark of Krishna's splendor. One time Srila Prabhupada was in the airport and an air stewardess walked past and Prabhupada turned to the brahmachari and said, Beautiful, isn't she? So that was an awkward moment. <laughs> what do you do? Disagree with Srila Prabhupada? No, no, Prabhupada. I think you're wrong. <laughs> or do you say yes, but maybe he's testing me? You, you're Brahmachari? So the Brahmachari took the safe option and stayed quiet. <laughs> and then Prabhupada turned and said, If she's that beautiful... Imagine how beautiful Krishna is. Yes, because the devotee sees behind it all is Krishna. So we are trying to bring this consciousness of Krishna back into our life. And the Bhagavatam is systematically teaching us and training us to again have this vision of the Lord. Yomam pasyati sarvatra sarvam chamai pasyati. Dasya ham na pranasya me, such a me na pranashyati. For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. So the Bhagavatam systematically helps us. The Bhagavatam contains ten topics, as we know, isn't it? Atra sarago avisaragascha stanam poshanamutaya. Manvantere Shanukata Nirodha Muktirashraya. These are the ten topics of the Bhagavatam. Now, different commentators they say different things about these topics. Some of them say that all the topics are contained in all of the cantos. Sometimes it's said that particular cantos focus on particular topics. One breakdown that's often given of the Bhagavatam. And the ten topics is this. This is given by commentators like Sridhar Swami, uh, Viraragavacharya. They say the third canto is focusing on sarga, elemental creation, isn't it? Because you have the conversations of Maitreya Muni. You have the conversations of Kapila Dev explaining about all the elements. This is usually the toughest part of the Bhagavatam for most of us. Canto number four is dealing with Vishadaga. Yes, secondary creation, creation from Brahmaji. Yes, because from Brahma, then Swayambhuva Manu, and then Swayambhuva Manu is having uh, their offspring, and then their offspring, and like that we are learning in the canto 
the fourth canto, the different descendants from Brahma. Fifth canto is dealing with stanam, or the planetary systems, isn't it? All the different uh, structure of the universe. Sixth canto is dealing with poshanam, nourishment, how Krishna is bestowing his grace upon the living entities like Ajamil and giving them a second chance. Number seven, Uti. Canto number seven is dealing with the creative impetus. Because what is the creative impetus behind everything in this world? Lust. Pumsha striya mituni bhavametam. The attraction between man and woman, this lust. From that, ato griha kshetra sutapta viter janasya moho yamahamma meti. Then everything is coming. When Srila Prabhupada was walking past, I think it was the New York sky, I think it was France or New York. And as Prabhupada was looking by, looking at the skyline, with the huge high-rise buildings, Prabhupada said, the women in this city must be very beautiful. <laughs> Interesting connection. Prabhupada said, because there are so many big buildings, creation is going on. That means the man and the women are uniting in attraction and therefore so much material creation is going on. Eighth canto is dealing with man Manvantara, the Manus, isn't it? We're lead reading about all the different Manus in the eighth canto. Ninth canto is dealing with Ishanukata. The activities of the Supreme Lord. Yes, in the ninth canto we are hearing about Parashuram. We are hearing about Lord Ram. And we're hearing about all the lineages which lead to Krishna's birth. Canto number 10 is dealing with Ashraya. Because Krishna is the supreme shelter. Krishna is the supreme lovable object. Canto number 11 is dealing with Mukti. Because, yes, Krishna is speaking to Uddhavji, preparing him to leave the world. Yes, Uddhavji, you take sannyas. I'm giving you my final instructions. And then you prepare yourself to leave this world. And twelfth canto is dealing with nirodha, annihilation. How this world is periodically annihilated. How the living entities are all annihilated. And ultimately how parikshit is annihilated by the snake bite of Taksha. So then this leaves the question, what are Cantos 1 and 2 about? So according to this analysis of our Acharyas, Canto number 1 is dealing with Adhikar, the qualification of someone to hear Bhagavatam. Because in the first Canto, we are hearing the conversations between Sutta Goswami and the sages. We're hearing the conversations between Narada and Vyas. We're hearing the conversations between Sukadev and Parikshit. And in these conversations between the speaker and the listener, we are hearing what is the adhikar of one who wants to understand and grasp and absorb the full message of the Bhagavatam. And the basic qualification for one to hear Bhagavatam is that one has to be desperate. One has to have incredible eagerness. One must be able to hear with rapt attention. Then uh, one can grasp the message of Bhagavatam. And then our Acharyas say, Canto number two, which is what we're dealing with now, Canto number two is all about sadhana, the means of connection. How do we actually revive our consciousness of Krishna? Because yes, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem, Sadhya Kabunoi, it's already there, it's already within you, it simply has to be reawakened. So what is the means of reawakening our dormant consciousness of Krishna? And because there were so many different sages of so many different denominations, uh, when Sukadev and Parikshit were speaking, therefore Sukadev Goswami gives different means of sadhana, meditation on the universal form, 
meditation on Paramatma within the heart, worship of the demigods, and then finally it culminates in pure devotional service. So in this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam, particularly in these first three chapters of the second canto, we are hearing what is the means of connecting ourselves back to Krishna. Amidst all the other duties, amidst all the other responsibilities, amidst all the other pressures and pushing uh, expectations that there are in our life, the biggest job is to revive our remembrance of Krishna at every moment. Yena tena prakarena mana krishna niveshayet. The devotee came to Srila Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, sometimes I forget Krishna. Prabhupada said, you always forget Krishna and sometimes you remember him. <laughs> when will we make that switch? That always forgetting Krishna and Sometimes remembering him? When we will we make that switch to always remembering Krishna? That is Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is not just that I chant 16 rounds a day. Krishna consciousness is not just that I attended Mangalarti today. Krishna consciousness is not just that I have studied all the Shastra and I have my Bhakti Shastri to prove it. That is wonderful. That is very nice. And those things we must do. But the net result of it is we must remember Krishna. We must be conscious and aware of Krishna. Otherwise, again, we become an atheist. You know, there are different types of atheists in this world. One type of atheist is called a default atheist. They are the people who don't believe in God because they couldn't be bothered to even look into it. Then you have philosophical atheists. They are the ones who disbelieve in God because they feel that science has taken God out of the equation. We've answered everything. We know where the world came from. Then there are emotional atheists. They disbelieve in God not because it makes philosophical sense, but because they're angry with God. Maybe something happened in their life. Maybe they were let down. Maybe some terrible thing happened in the name of religion and therefore they turn away from God because of heavy emotions. Then there are covered atheists. They are the Mayavadis. Once I was walking down the street and someone had a t-shirt. And on the front it said, I used to be an atheist. I thought, dot, dot, dot. I thought, this sounds promising. And then he walked past me and on the back it said, and then I realized, I am God. <laughs> I thought, oh no, that's even worse. <laughs> no, no, be an atheist again. Because yes, a covered atheist, you see, the eighth God is here, the living entity is here, and the atheists, what they do is pull God down, take him down, there's no God, and they make it equal. And what does the impersonalist, the Mayavadi do? Yeah, God is there, we also did. <laughs> so therefore, it's covered atheism, do you understand? Because you're removing the distinction. Whether you remove the distinction here or you remove the distinction here, once you remove the bhakta and the bhagavan, then it's atheism. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, it is a favorite sport of the Vaishnavas to defeat Mayavadis. Then there are transcendental atheists. Ever heard of that one? Default, you know. Philosophical, you know. Emotional, you know. Covered, you know. Transcendental? Yes. Because in the spiritual world, yoga maya is functioning. And the cowherd boys look at Krishna and say, Who are you? You think you're a big man? You and us, we are the same. 
and we defeated you in wrestling, so now you carry us on your shoulders. In Vrindavan, they don't love Krishna because he's God. They love God because he's Krishna. But there is another type of atheist. That atheist is called the psychological atheist. That is the one who dresses like a devotee. That is the one who talks like a devotee. Isn't it? Devotees use words that no one else in the world uses, like bona fide. No one uses that word. He is spaced out. That's a devotee word. <laughs> you dress like a devotee, you speak like a devotee, you carry yourself like a devotee, you even do the activities of a devotee, but in our consciousness, in our psychology, we are always taking Krishna out of the picture. Once I was in one home, and there was a beautiful picture of Krishna Balaram like this. So for two hours, I was chanting in front of that picture, back and forth. Beautiful picture of Krishna Balaram. And you know what I realized after two hours? Every time I was walking to the picture, instead of seeing Krishna Balaram, I was looking at my own reflection. Isn't it amazing? You can be right in front of Krishna and you can be completely self-absorbed. That is a psychological atheist. And so perhaps we think the atheists are all the people out there. The atheists are all the people out there that we have to invite to a program. But maybe a little bit of that atheist is within us. Therefore, the consciousness has to embody remembrance of Krishna, then the consciousness becomes Vrindavan because Vrindavan is the place where Krishna is the center. So here Brahmaji was able to trigger that consciousness of Krishna and this is the purpose of the Hare Krishna movement. This is the purpose of our temples that somehow or other they have to trigger this remembrance of Krishna. When Srila Prabhupada came to London his famous words in the press conference, his very famous first words when he landed in London, the reporter asked him, Swamiji, what have you come here to teach? And Prabhupada said, I have come here to teach you what you've forgotten. And the reporter said, what's that? <laughs> Clearly they had forgotten. <laughs> Prabhupada said, I've Come here to teach you about God. Some people say God is dead. Some people say God is an energy. Some people say God is irrelevant. But I've come here to teach you how you can see God face to face. So that is the purpose of our movement. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to this world. E mata bhakta bhav kori angikar. Apani achari bhakti kori la prachar. He takes the Bhakta Bhav and he begins to give us all the clues, all the hints, the ideal example of how to awaken consciousness of Krishna. And then what Mahaprabhu does is he brings the Goswamis. And the Goswamis are the ones who explain to us how we can awaken the remembrance of Krishna in our life. See, Mahaprabhu comes in this world for two reasons an internal reason and an external reason. When Mahaprabhu wants help to fulfill his internal purpose of relishing Radha Bhav, then he takes the help of the Sakis. Lalita Saki is Swarup Damodar. Vishaka Devi is Ramananda Rai. And with their help, Mahaprabhu fulfills his internal purpose because the Sakis help him to experience love. But when Mahaprabhu wants to explain love, when Mahaprabhu wants to teach the world how they can develop love, 
when Mahaprabhu wants to establish the movement which will give the insights of how to reawaken Nitya Siddha Krishna brain that is within the heart, then Mahaprabhu takes the help of the Manjaris. Rupa Goswami is the leader. Rupa Manjari. And Rupa Goswami and the Goswamis then become the masterminds of Bhakti. The Goswamis are the masterminds of Bhakti. They are the masterminds because the first thing is they have mastered their mind and senses. They are also the masterminds because they have understood the mind of their master. <laughs> but they are also the masterminds because they know how to masterfully awaken Krishna consciousness within the mind of every single living entity. <laughs> Therefore, Rupa Goswami and the six Goswamis give us all the keys. When Mahaprabhu wants them to establish the Krishna consciousness movement which will awaken this knowledge, this consciousness, then Mahaprabhu gives them instructions. Bhakta Bhakti Krishna Prem Tatvera Nidhar Vaishnavera Kritya Ara Vaishnava Achar Krishna Bhakti Krishna Prem Seva Pravartan Lupta Tirta Udara Ar Vairagya Shikshan Mahaprabhu gives the Goswamis five keys. And he says, I want you to do these five things and teach people these five things because these five things are the keys to unlocking Bhakti Rasa. The first key, Bhakta Bhakti Krishna Prem Tatvirani Dhar. The first key is Tattva. What Mahaprabhu tells the Goswamis is write books which establish the truth of who is a devotee, who is God, and what is the process of bhakti. Therefore, in a devotee's life, tattva is very important. I'm not talking about the book that I've authored, by the way. <laughs> That's just called tattva. Krishna tattva. Tattva means universal truths that stand true in all times, places, and circumstances. Nana Shastra Vichara Ne Kunipuno Sadharma Sanstapako. What the Goswamis do, they are like cows. Have you seen cows? They don't move much. The only thing that's moving generally is their mouth. But what is happening from all of that chewing? They are then producing milk. And that milk is nourishing the world. And so the Goswamis, Shastra Vichara Neka Nipandre, contemplating, churning, and drawing out Sadharma, the Tattva that we need to understand. So the first thing in awakening our remembrance of Krishna is we need to read the books written by the Goswamis. If we want to understand Bhagavatam, we have to understand through the parampara. Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava Ekanta Ashraya Kore Chaitanya Charane it is said that if the Bhagavatam is establishing who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, isn't it? Ete chamsha kala pumsha Krishna stu Bhagavan svayam So Bhagavatam establishes who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the Goswamis, they churn it further and they establish who is the Supreme Personality of Krishna. Aradhyo Bhagavan Vrajay Satana Yasta Dhamma Vrindavanam. Krishna, who lives in Vrindavan, who is the son of Nanda Maharaj, who enchants the gopis, that is Krishna. And that Krishna Tattva is outlined in the books 
that the Goswamis leave us. So therefore, the first key, if you want to awaken remembrance of Krishna, is we have to understand tattva as given by the Goswamis. The second thing, Vaishnaveda Kritya or Vaishnava Achar. Mahaprabhu tells the Goswamis, establish Sadachar, how a devotee should behave, how a devotee should act, what should be the character, the personality of a devotee. Sadachar literally means the, the best way to act. And therefore, uh, we can have all the tattva, but if we don't have sadachar, then we will not awaken remembrance of Krishna. Because it's not just knowledge. Krishna says along with knowledge, you have to have humility. Vidya vinaya shampane brahmane gavi hastini. Krishna says it's not just knowledge, but you have to have faith. Shraddhaval labate jnanam. Krishna says it's not just knowledge, but you have to embody austerity. Idam te na tapashkaya, na bhaktaya kadachana. Krishna says it's not just knowledge, but you also have to have renunciation. Vairagya vidya, nija bhakti yoga, shikshartha meka, purusha purana. And Krishna says, it's not just knowledge, but you need to have mercy. Atapite deva pudambuja dvaya prashada lesha nugrihita evahi. If you don't have prashad, if you have not attracted the goodwill of Krishna and the devotees, if you are not showered with grace, prashada lesha nugrihita evahi, you will never be able to understand Krishna. And how do you attract that grace? Sadachar. When Mahaprabhu saw Sanatan Goswami, he said, your behavior is impeccable. Your behavior is outstanding. Your behavior sets the standard for the whole world. And your behavior attracts all the grace of the Vaishnavas. So Sadachar is the second key. And then Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Prem, Seva Pravartan. Mahaprabhu told the Goswamis, Seva, establish places where people can come and render Seva, service to Krishna. So therefore we come to the temple, not just to be here, but to also serve here. The temple is a place in which we serve Krishna. The temple is a place in which we are simulating the spiritual world. Prabhupada said, Temples are embassies of the spiritual world. And embassies, even the Indian embassy in London, in the middle of winter, has a fan on the ceiling that's going round. And you think, why in the world is there a fan in this building in the middle of winter? Because it's the Indian embassy. And when you go inside the Indian embassy, you're no longer in London. There are other facets of India that take place in the Indian embassy, which I won't share with you today. <laughs> but you can imagine. When we come to the temple and see the deities, it's such a deep impression on the heart. I tell you an amazing story. One year, I was doing the marathon, book marathon in Paris. So I was on the streets in Paris, trying to distribute books. This was the hardest experience in my life, because if you don't speak French, what do you do? And French people refuse to learn English. They say the English should learn French. <laughs> they are... Should I say stubborn? <laughs> so the whole day in France, all you hear is no mercy, no mercy. Of course, mercy means thank you. So they're saying no thank you, no thank you. But actually they're saying no mercy. I don't want any mercy. 
No mercy. And it was difficult. So one day I was in Paris. It was a difficult day. I was holding the Bhagavad Gita. And then this one boy came up to me. Muslim boy. And he said, who's that? So I was, I was thinking, who's he? Then I thought, oh, this. Bhagavad Gita. Oh, this is Krishna. I said, Krishna? He said, this person has captured my mind. I said, how? He said, in my life, I only really went on one holiday. And the one holiday I went to outside of my home place was I went to India. And he said, when I went to India, I went to one temple. And ever since going to that one temple and seeing the devotion and the way in which Krishna was worshipped there, since that moment, I've not been able to forget Krishna. I was like, wow. So I asked him, which temple? He said, no, no, you won't know this temple. It's a small temple. <laughs> I said, try me. <laughs> so he said, no, it was in some obscure place called Jaipur. I said, wow, you went to Jaipur? He said, yes. I said, which temple in Jaipur did you go to? In my mind, I already had a hunch. <laughs> he said, there was a temple of Govinda. No! And he said, ever since, this boy, he was a Muslim boy, he knew nothing about. He said, ever since I saw this deity of Krishna, I can't get him out of my mind. And you know what Rupa Goswami says, right? Smeram bhangi traya parichitim sachi vishtir nadrishtim vamsi nyasta dhara kishalayam ujjwalam chandra kena govindakyam haritanam itikeshi tirto pakante ma prekshistas tavajadi sakhe bandhu sange stirangaha Rupa Goswami says, if you are at all interested in friendship, love, society, and all the things of this world, for goodness sake, don't go to the Yamuna. Because there, standing on the banks of the Yamuna, is Govindaji. And Govindaji is casting sidelong glances at his devotees. And if his eyes meet your eyes, then maybe, just maybe, you will forget about everything. And I was looking at this boy and I was thinking, here is the praman. <laughs> here is the full evidence. So it's amazing. Save a pravartan, these temples create such an impression and then Krishna again becomes awake within our consciousness. And then Lupta Tirtha, Mahaprabhu told the Goswamis, Tirtha, excavate the holy places, encourage everyone, go to the holy places. What does Tirtha mean? Tirtha means a bridge. It means a connection point. It means a gateway, a portal. Through the Tirtha, one is getting a glimpse of the spiritual world. And therefore, the devotees are taking shelter of Sri Vrindavan Dham, Sri Mayapur Dham, because these places awaken a deep remembrance of Krishna. And then finally, Vairagya Shikshan. Mahaprabhu told the Goswamis, teach the world about Vairagya. Because how can you remember Krishna? If you don't give up the things of this world. Bhogeshwarya prashakta nam taya parita chetasham vyavasayatmika buddhi samadon vidhiyate. If you're still attached to the bhoga and the aishvarya, ishvaro ham aham bhogi siddho ham balavan sukhi. 
if we still have this mentality of trying to enjoy the world, if we're not ready to let it go, then we can never really grasp full remembrance of Krishna. And so Mahaprabhu told the Goswamis, Vedagya Shikshan, show the ideal example of how to detach from the world. So these become the five keys. If you want to awaken remembrance, if you want that trigger, just as Brahmaji was triggered into remembrance of Krishna, then the triggers are tattva. Study the Shastra and understand tattva. Number two, sadachar. Embody ideal behavior. Conduct yourself in the way that the devotees conduct themselves in the spiritual world. Seva, engage in service and take advantage of these beautiful temples in which the spiritual world is fully manifest. Tirtha, go to the holy places, spend time in Vrindavan. Yes, by all means, as the t-shirt says, I lost my heart in Vrindavan. And then Vairagya. Learn to let go. Learn to let go of this world. Let to learn to let go of all the worries, all the anxieties, all the bitter feelings. We have so much negativity in our minds, so many bad feelings against others. Do you know why Dhritarashtra, even after renouncing everything, still he could not get full perfection? You know why? Because in his heart and mind, he still held a grudge against the Pandavas. So you have to let go. We have to forgive. The goal of life is not to remember all the terrible things that someone did to you. The goal of life is to remember all the beautiful things that Krishna is doing for us at every moment. But if our heart, if our mind is hijacked by all this negativity, then there's no space left for Krishna. Therefore, we have to let go. And so the Goswamis teach us these beautiful principles. Tattva, Sadachar, Seva, Tirtha, Vairagya. And in this way, we can remember Krishna and make our life successful. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you so much. So uh, they said we're going till 10.45. It's 10.45. So I don't know if we should stop here or we should take some question or If there are any questions or corrections or comments, or yeah, Prabhu has. I think it's coming, Prabhu. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Yeah, ask the question in short. Last twenty-five years. But I'm getting some realization for 25 years. Yeah. For the last 25 years, I, I'm getting some realization in chanting. Like uh, Prabhupada tells us to just hear the holy names, uh, but Krishna says we should ch chant with intent, bhav means uh, Krishna is mine. I love Krishna. I surrender to Krishna. Uh, so all these bhav should be there in chanting. But while chanting, the mind is not involved. We just hear and we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So how that intent will come? in chanting that I love Krishna, Krishna is mine, I surrender to Krishna, and because mind is not involved with chanting. Thank you. Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says, Harikatha is the Swarup Shakti of Hari Kirtan. Just as Srimati Radharani is the Swarup Shakti of Krishna, we never worship Krishna without Srimati Radharani. And similarly, he says, we never do Hari Kirtan without Hari Katha. Because when we do Hari Katha, when we hear about Krishna, 
या छिन्वतम रस ज्ञानम स्वादु स्वादु पदे पदे The sages are saying we're hearing this rasa gyanam we're tasting so much and then naturally when one's heart and mind is filled with Krishna then when they chant remembrance of Krishna will come so hari katha helps us to have the right orientation the right conception and hari katha develops within us a desperation When we chant Shila Prabhupada says we should chant like a baby is crying for the mother. And in order for that to happen one has to have some feeling some vipralamba some feeling of separation some feeling of longing. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur says the way that that feeling will come is by hearing more and more about Krishna. So as we hear more and more about Krishna then one day we begin thinking i really want to be there yes krishna i really want to see you i really want to see you but it takes so long as one famous person sang who was hari's son <laughs> george harrison so yes let us hear about krishna let us reawaken our memory um and in this way then let's chant with that hari katha and pray that it will go deeper thank you anyone else hari krishna so the question is from the child sitting beside me <laughs> how to develop the mood for hari katha how to develop the mood for hari katha shushusho shadhana sya vasudeva katha ruchi shyan mahat sevaya vipra punya tirth nishevanat one must associate with someone who has taste for hari katha one must catch the virus one must become infected once a military general had come to see bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur so you know preachers are innovative they find innovative ways to reach the hearts and minds of the people they speak to so bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur looked at this person his name was kundan lal Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said just like when there is a military operation then a helicopter is sent the helicopter is launched and then the helicopter comes to the territory and then gradually the helicopter comes down and then the helicopter lands and then when the helicopter lands the doors open and out of the doors all the soldiers with their weapons run in all the directions and those soldiers then capture all of that territory skundan lal was like am i seeing a sadhu or a military expert <laughs> and then bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur said in the same way the sound vibration the shabda brahman is launched from the mouth of a bhagavata and when those transcendental syllables are launched from the mouth of a bhagavata if by good fortune they come down and they land in your heart then every single syllable will then run out from those words and take over every iota of your being <laughs> so we have to hear from people who have taste because when someone is speaking hari katha they are not just giving you information but they are transmitting their conviction their inspiration their taste when shila prabhupad spoke it penetrated the hearts of so many people because shila prabhupad spoke from a place of love Mukunda Maharaj when he saw Shila Prabhupada for the first time and came out he said I didn't understand a word of what he said 
But I realized this person has something important to tell the world. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. But just from his tonality, just from the vibration coming from his mouth, I can understand this is some transcendental message. That is a sadhu. So we must seek that association. And let us not just feel that sadhus are people of the past. No, no, there are sadhus amongst us. There are people who have taste for the Bhagavatam amongst us. Just some time ago, I spoke to one of our congregation members in London who's in a high-profile job in the city. And so I asked him, what did you do on the weekend? He said, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, started reading Bhagavatam. I said, wow, great. I said, then what? He said, I carried on. I said, and then what? He said, I read some more. I said, what time did you finish? He said, 11 o'clock at night. I was happy to know that such people exist in the world today who can read Bhagavatam for 10, 11, 12, 13 hours. Yatrin vatam rasa jnanam swadu swadu pade pade. So let us find those sadhus who have that taste and let us become infected. Shan, punya tirta nishevanat. Such service will render one with vasudev katha ruchi, some taste for hearing by Krishna. And it's okay. Okay, are we. Any other questions? Ah, oh, yes. My oh, the Akashvani you. is coming again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. First time ever <laughs> in the history of Gopinath. Please. What can we say? We can try to give you many practical tips here. A seminar on forgiveness. <clears throat> if we don't forgive others, will Krishna ever forgive us? What about all the mistakes we made? What about all the people that we hurt? What about all the insensitivity within our own being? When it comes to other people's mistakes, we are judges. And when it comes to our own mistakes, we're lawyers. So, we need mercy. But to, we need mercy, we also have to give mercy. We have to be kind, we have to be open-hearted. The Vaishnav never closes the door. Ultimately, we can hear it so much that we have to forgive, we have to forgive. But really speaking, the only way we can forgive is when we start developing some bhav for Krishna. It's interesting that out of the eight symptoms of bhav that Rupa Goswami gives... The first one, Srila Prabhupada translates as forgiveness. Kshantiravyartha kalatvam viraktir manashunyata ashabandha samutkantha namagane sadaruchi ashakti stad gunakhyane pritistad vashati stale tyadayonu bhavashur jata bhavan kurejane. So many symptoms of bhav. But the very first symptom of bhav, ikshantir, forgiveness. Because when one has opened up their consciousness to the spiritual world, to the love of Krishna, then how you can take the material world so seriously? Then are you going to hold on to that thing that that person said 27 half and a half years ago that you still remember now? Is it worth it? It's all insignificant. Everything is moving in this world, in this river of names. 
so transitory, here today, gone tomorrow. His grace, Tribhuvanath Prabhu, disciple of Srila Prabhupada, he used to say, don't take the illusion too seriously. It's just a computer game. And the kid is totally into it. But the adult is just looking and laughing, saying it's just a computer game. So let us realize whatever happens is happening under Krishna's sweet will. Whatever reactions come to me, whatever seeming negativity comes to me, I need to experience that. Let me try to develop the vision that people are the messengers of my karma. Nayam jano me sukha dukha he dur. People are not the cause of my happiness and distress. Manam, param, karanam, amananti is my own mind, which is the param karanam, samsara chakram parivarta yadyat. And it's that mind which is perpetuating my existence in this material world. So yes, life is too short. On the deathbed, we don't want to have grudges. We don't want to be imprisoned by negativity. We want to be free of all of that. So let us pray to Krishna to give us that magnanimity to just overlook all of it. I hope that helps. Forgive me if it doesn't. <laughs> Mike, one more, we'll take one more question, Does, can you pass the mic? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful lecture. My question is that uh, I want to understand the two, two things basically for my clarity and for others if they have doubt. It's like it said that if we are engaged in uh, Krishna consciousness activities, then all our material attachments will be vanished with time. Other side, you also mentioned the same point in the class today. Other side, it is said that if we are keeping the material attachments, then we are not going to develop love for Krishna. So, because many a times we are not able to, like personally me, almost all the time I am not able to uh, leave the material attachments. And uh, like it is uh, said that if we are not leaving, then we are not going to develop uh, love for Krishna. So, I want clarity over the two contradicting statements. Once it is said that if we are doing activities, that will be vanished. Other time it is coming to us, like it is said that if you are not leaving, you are not going to get love for Krishna. So I just need clarity between the two. Thank you so much. Yes. Bhagavatam says, Akama sarva kamo va moksha kamo daradhi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param. That even if you are sarva kama, even if you have every material desire under the sun, just engage in devotional service. Everything will work out. And then we also hear when we recite the offenses against the holy name. And it is also an offense. No, what is that? The tenth offense is to maintain material attachments even whilst chanting the holy name of the Lord. The point here is that one may have material attachments. One may have material desires. One may not be able to give it up at this point. But while practicing devotional service, they are not purposely trying to cultivate those desires and they're sincerely desiring that those material attachments and desires disappear. Uh, what is this verse? Tato Bajeta Mamprita, the first verse. First verse before that? 
जात श्रद्ध मत कथा शु निर्विना सर्व कर्म शु वेद दुखात मकान कामान परित्यागे प्यनीश्वरा Let's do a survey and see if this relates to you. Jat shraddha mat katha shu. Are you someone who has developed some faith in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness? Put your hand up. Okay, good. Nirvina sarva karma shu. Are you still not able to give up all your material desires? Put your hand up. Vai the dukhat makan kaman do you realize that all these material things will ultimately cause you misery put your hand up okay so you qualify so what's the solution the tobha je tamam prita shraddhalu hrdrita nischaya ju samanas ch tan kaman dukadar kam ch garhayan If this stands for you, you have faith, but somehow you can't give up your material desires, even though you know that they cause misery. Then what does the Bhagavatam tell us? Tato bhajeta, mam prita. Don't worry, just carry on. Shraddha lor, drida nischaya. Being faithful, being determined. Ju samanas chetan kaman. All the while in your mind contemplating, these material desires are not going to bring me any happiness. Krishna, please do some internal operation. Do kadar kam shigar hayan. In this way, one should carry on, and eventually, one will be able to uh, purify their heart. So yes we may have material desires but two things first thing is don't cultivate more material desires and number two sincerely pray that krishna give you the strength to overcome those material desires then even though we may have so many other desires through the process the fire of devotional service everything will become uh, resolved Hare Hare Krishna Extremely thankful Maharaj Thank for you. bringing such wisdom such inspiration to all of us it was a very long awaited bhagavatam from you because we have been see, seeing you online getting inspired so let us thank I've Maharaj I've also been seeing all of you online <laughs> <laughs> we would look forward to having more of you it seems that every talk that you give satisfies us fully but makes us more hungry f- to hear more so there's a evening uh, geeta class at 7:30 by maharaj being given right here <coughs> so if you can make it please do come otherwise online but uh, for the time and for the inspiration that he gave today let us thank maharaj by loudly chanting hribo 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 So now there will be a short kirtan by Akila Bandhu Prabhu, and uh, next door in Gopal Ji Hall there is the beautiful jewelan that will be starting in some time. Please do attend that. And Maharaj has penned many books. We know first him as first as author. So few of his books are available downstairs at uh, near Diamond Tower. So please, if you want to take, please do this. To, uh, Gita three and Tattva. and last not but not least one of our brahmacharis has uh, written a book uh, oh, of course the yes. smart be the smarter you at the workplace so would like maharaj to launch this book uh, rasigraman pu please do rasigraman pu has written a, his second book be the smarter yeah. you at the workplace <laughs> can you please open maharaj So our sampradaya is the sampradaya of the pen. <laughs> so Shri Prabhupad said don't be dull you should also write. So our acharyas they were so empowering uh who could be a more prolific writer than Shri Prabhupad. Shri Prabhupad was like the modern day Vyasadeva he was really presenting all the literatures 
But Srila Prabhupada was so magnanimous when he began back to Godhead in the early days. 1966, he said, one article, my Guru Maharaj, one article, me, and one article, one of you. That was amazing because Srila Prabhupada, from day one, he told his disciples, you also write. You also bring your realizations forward. And according to the climate that we're in, you transmit these truths in a way, in a creative and compassionate way that will reach the hearts and minds of the devotee, uh, of all the conditioned souls. So Rasik Raman Prabhu has been doing uh, this work very wonderfully. He already has one book. This is the second book. Um, I'm sure there are many, many more books. So we pray that through this writing, uh, many more people will come in contact with the Hare Krishna <laughs> movement and Srila Prabhupada. So the book is available today at a special discount also downstairs along with Mara's books. This book will also be available. So please do avail, uh, get a copy of this book called as Be the Smarter You at the Workplace. Also good for brahmacharis in the ashram. <laughs> Be the smarter you in the ashram. Thank you so much. Wish you the best. Thank you, Thank you everyone for your kindness. Again, my uh, humble obeisances to you. Many more devotees here are senior, more advanced, and more qualified to speak than me. But you all kindly came and gave me the opportunity. So, uh, uh, my deep gratitude to you, and I hope to be in your association more and more. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, and Prashina Bhagavatam ki jai.